Uh, in March, as part of the deliverables for the Summit for Democracy, NIST launched the Trustworthy and Responsible AI Resource Center. This is meant to be a one-stop shop of all the information about AI risk management in terms of the documents, in terms of the standards, and uh, in terms of other tools uh, that can help with AI risk management. Uh, it includes AI RMF, it includes its companion playbook in a interactive, uh, searchable, filterable uh, format. It also includes a glossary of terms because it's often the case that we use the, term, uh, the same term meaning two different things. Uh, we leverage the OECD metrics hub and there's a link to the OECD metric hub to uh, sort of uh, let the uh, community know about the type of metrics that are available today. We, expand, uh, we plan to expand it, uh, add other things such as standard tracker and more. Uh, we want it to be a one-stop shop of information about AI, but also we want it to be a platform for engagements and informed conversations and dialogue happens. So for example, the conversations about development of the AI RMF profiles, we hope to uh, happen uh, within the AI Resource Center. Um, uh, to address the risks of the generative AI, uh, NIS launched a generative AI public working group end of June and a public working group with uh, enthusiastic response from, uh, from the community. More than 2,500 public volunteers joined us uh, to start working on a development of a cross-sector profile of AI RMF for generative AI. Um, given the urgency and need to have this type of profiles today, we decided to uh, focus on four sets of uh, guidelines for the use by community uh, as the first step of development of the profiles. Those guidelines include uh, guidelines for uh, pre-deployment verifications of the systems. These are the type of tests that's needed to be done before the systems or models are released or put in deployment uh, to ensure their safety and uh, trustworthiness. Um, another set of the guidelines look at the issues around uh, digital content provenance. Um, the watermarking is uh, one technique, but we'll look at other uh, uh, type of techniques for digital content provenance. And uh, another uh, guide, uh, working group is focusing on development of uh, incident disclosures and incident database uh, that has relationships uh, with the work happening in OECD around the incident database. Uh, and the end goal is to kind of have a catalog of the vulnerabilities, failures that can happen in the system, uh, which can equip other people, other uh, uh, users and deployers and developer of AI systems uh, to be better manage the risk of the AI systems. Given the importance of the governance and the govern function in AI RMF, the fourth sub-working group is uh, working and focusing on development of the guidelines for the governance of the generative AI systems. So NTIA is the National Telecommunications and Information Administration and it sits within the Department of Commerce for the United States government and we are the principal advisor to the president on um, all things telecommunications and information policy. In the world of AI, we just had in April a request for comment for um, AI accountability policy. So uh, we opened up a period to gather insight from academia industry, civil society, um, and the average person on what they would like to see in AI accountability policy moving forward. And currently we are um, reviewing those comments and we're putting it into a report that will be released uh, in near term. All the comments are uh, published on the website, so you can look at what um, people are already thinking about it and then see how uh, we're going to incorporate those into our report. Uh, in the report, we are doing a review of all the comments that come in, and then we're just going to fold that into our policy recommendations for uh, the president and for what we would like to see companies take on. We've already worked a lot with industry and civil society in stakeholder consultations on what we can actually implement um, when we're shaping AI governance. Um, and that's really important because it, uh, you know, it shows what's actually operable and implementable. A policy is only good if it can actually work, um, and so that's what we've been doing. So the International Trade Administration, also known as ITA, is the lead trade and investment promotion agency at the U.S. Department of Commerce. So we work to improve the global competitiveness 
of U.S. industry, U.S. businesses, uh, by advocating for fair and balanced and interoperable regulatory frameworks globally in key markets where our businesses operate. The International Trade Administration has a combination of industry experts, uh, you know, experts by, by different types of industry se uh, sectors or verticals, and then country and regional experts. And so we're always trying to do our policy advocacy uh, in a structured and combined way, meaning that we're doing a series of bilateral engagements with key trading partners and also advocating for our policy positions and priorities in multilateral fora like the OECD, Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation, other groups like that. So AI is an emerging technology, but maybe even more importantly, an enabling technology and that it is used by many businesses to augment services, to augment their analytics capabilities, but it's also an exportable service on its own. And so this technology is becoming so widespread globally uh, that it is something we want to make sure um, that we are having a voice in emerging uh, conversations about the appropriate regulatory approaches to governing uh, safe and responsible use of this technology. And so uh, we, we like to be part of uh, the global conversation and making sure that we're, ha that we're providing uh, input based on our industry's interest and what we believe in the medium to long term will help ensure that there is more interoperability than not between the United States and other key markets where our businesses operate. We are also one of several agencies at the Department of Commerce and the U.S. government more broadly that works on AI policy or standards in some form. So we do work very closely on a weekly basis with our colleagues from NTIA as well as NIST um, and other agencies of the Department of Commerce to make sure that we are sharing information about feedback being received from different key stakeholders, uh, coordinating approaches to different bilateral and multilateral engagements on AI policy. Um, when it comes to federal register requests for comments, like my colleague from NTIA mentioned, uh, ITA also has done one of these. Uh, uh, on AI specifically, so we commissioned a request for comment last September in 2022 uh, requesting feedback from U.S. companies and industry associations about emerging trade and regulatory barriers to cross-border AI development and, uh, and deployment. And so we, we took in uh, the feedback we received from about 20 different industry associations. Uh, we have found, identified all of the commonalities um, in that feedback about where they are seeing certain potential barriers to uh, d development and deployment of AI systems across markets. Um, and then using that information to inform how we as the U.S. government advocate directly uh, with our uh, foreign government counterparts for certain regulatory uh, approaches and standards frameworks based on that, that feedback.